I gotta tell you, I'm enjoying the cool weather, as if you didn't know. Walking out at about 6 o'clock or 6.30 with a short sleeve shirt on just makes you feel like you're alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. This day, Lord, the words that we have from you, may they ring true. May they touch us deep down in our soul. May we realize that our hope, everything we have and everything we are is in you. It's not in the bank in the middle of Beverly Hills in somebody else's name. It's in you, Lord. Because you know what? Lord, you own all that money in the bank in the middle of Beverly Hills in somebody else's name. You own everything, a cattle on a thousand hills. Everything on this earth, everything we have, everything we use, everything we do, everything about us comes from you, belongs to you. May we be good stewards of what you have given us to use. Bless us this day, Holy Spirit, be in this place. And may your anointing be upon the words that you have given. Bless once again, I ask, Lord, everyone in this house, in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. and amen. Praise you, Lord. Boy, I'm sure glad I didn't forget my lid this morning. You have no idea how bare you feel. When you're used to one, when you don't have it, praise God. Before I say anything more concerning, I don't have any jokes today. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, though. I want to say that I, I was... Blessed by the service from the young people Wednesday night. They practiced music, didn't care whether they ate or not. They practiced music, then they had their service, they sang, they worshiped the Lord, and they sang again. That's not something they're used to doing. And they had an altar time. I stood back there in the back behind the doors, and it was dark, and it was cracked open, and I listened a lot to what went on. It was a blessing. Was it not, Jeannie? It was a blessing. It's really about the Lord. Getting together is great. Eating is great. But it's about the Lord. And what he does in your life. And what he will do in your life. And what he is doing in your life. Thank you for that. God bless you young folks. For your, your faithfulness to the Lord. What I, what I want to talk to you about, you've all heard it before, but I, I want to impress something out of this. I believe that uh, I think we all need to, to pay attention to it. I did not realize for myself. How much I needed to hear what the Word says in these things. We all need it. Anything that God's Word says to you, you need it. They didn't write it because they needed writing practice. The way they had to write in the days that the Bible was written was not easy and not fun. And if you had to dip, dip a pen in a and a little ink well to write just a couple, three letters and dip it again and write all that's in this book or use an old charcoal, piece of charcoal and a piece of paper as the Lord inspired them. 
They didn't write all that just because it was a good pastime. It was from the Lord. The words in this book are from the Lord. They're a lamp unto your feet, and they're a light unto your path. And everybody knows when you wander in darkness, as a man in sin is in darkness, how easy it is to stumble. You need light. This morning, we will be talking in terms of spiritual eyesight as opposed to man's eyesight. They're not even close to the same. Not even close. If you'd like to turn in your Bible, if you have one, to James chapter 1. I'm going to re- be reading verse 2 through 17. This will be from the New or from the Living Bible. Uh, I was, I told Rocky, I said I was this morning when I first came in. He's here before any of us and uh, preparing for everyone, fixing for us, serving us, doing for us. I said, well, i got to get back to the office because I feel a little stirred about changing a little something in what I've got in the Lord. And I went back, turned all my stuff on, turned my computer to Bible Gateway. Verse of the day was James 1 and 5, right in the middle of this. And I said, okay, I'm not changing anything. Praise God for how he works, how he puts music together with what he puts in our hearts. Rick and Karen, are you lost? The front row is up. (laughs) Just got to tease you a little. Praise God. Glad you're here. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 17. As I said, this will be from the Living Translation. As I read some of this here, our human nature, eyesight, everything about it, looks at this and says, ha, ha, ha. No. But God, while he cares about you in this life, in the things of life, And he wants to help you as much as he can, as much as he dare, without us going off the deep end. What he cares about, how many times have I said it, is what? Your soul, your spirit, your life. Because life on this earth is a short-term thing. It is appointed, the Bible says, unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. And this life does not last forever, and we all know that, and we see it all the time. But our soul, our spiritual life, is eternity. That's a long time. God's worried about that, not whether you have a hangnail or not. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty pointed sometimes, and that's okay. I don't know how else to be. Starting with verse 2. Dear brothers... Is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Absolutely. Don't look at me like a tree full of young owls. It's the truth. We have problems. John 16 and 33, it says, in this life, you're going to have problems. Who here has never had any? If you raise your hand, you're lying to me. You have problems. We have troubles. Things aren't good sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of long sieges of it that things aren't good. Jay's supposed to have the virus. Brother Craig has the virus. I don't know who else all, who else has the virus right now that we know of. 
Some people's just sick. So I don't work for the government, these people on their statistics. They don't want you to just be sick. They want you to have the China virus. It's good on their numbers for their lies. Huh, Jerry? The numbers are so skewed and so wrong that it's just incredible. But it gets done what the government wants done. So getting on past that. I have a real issue with all that stuff. Dear brothers, in your life, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? You're going to like these words, then be happy. Whoa! You want to read it? Look it up. For when the way is rough, your patience, in the ESV, I know, English Standard Version, it says steadfastness. Your patience has a chance to grow. Steadfastness is a heavier word than patience. Steadfastness is getting in a three-point stance and <laughs> plastering somebody. That's fun to do. Huh? Isn't it? Yeah. Steadfastness is standing in there. It's burying your feet. It's getting yourself in a place where you can hold on. Patience is a good thing. Something in most of my life I've had none of. Steadfastness speaks more of standing to the task. Praise you, Jesus. So let it grow. And don't try to squirm out of your problems. What? God said that? For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything strong in character Full and complete. If you did not have opposition of some form in your life, you'd be a weenie. That's the truth. That's the truth. Resistance builds strength does it not for these young guys going to the gym I'm through with that I did that in my time it's alright I used to bench press 340 so leave me alone I know what it takes to get there I liked bulldogging. Man, you could hammer them dudes. I was in shape. Not anymore. I got a shape, but it's more. <laughs> you know what they say? I got chest or drawers disease. My chest is one end of my drawers, and I'm just, you know, you know how that goes. What's the matter, Colleen? My cousin right here, Terry, God love his heart, there's a time when this was much of a man. I'm not kidding you. I mean, it still is, really. But there was a time he was, boy. Woo! But resistance, as opposed to no resistance, is what builds strength. And the more the resistance, the greater the strength. That is what 
the trials and the tribulations of this world with the Lord at your back does for you in the spiritual realm. Nothing to do with what goes on on this earth. It's about your spiritual life and your strength and what you will do with it and how you will be able to respond against the things that the devil brings against you. Because he will bring it. Praise God. For when your patience or your steadfastness is finally in full bloom, you know how it is. You watch fruit trees, and they start getting just a little bud thing on them here and there, and you're like, well, that's cool. But the day that them flowers are completely open in full sun, they're beautiful. Because something comes from that. It is fruit. On the tree, it is fruit in your life. When you come to full bloom. And when you allow God to work things in your life, you do that. And you become something useful. If you went down to the hardware store and you needed a shovel, you know them objects of torture that they sell down there? And it's got that, that steel head and spade, you know. I like them Ames ones. They're flatter and they didn't bud, didn't suck and stick into them when you're irrigating is bad. Them ones that are real cupped and curled, you can't shake all day long. You can't already shake the mud out. At any rate, you look at that metal thing and it's got that big deal coming up there that the handle goes into. I don't know what you call that deal, but I just know the handle goes in there and the rivet goes in there and, and all that, and then you're back in business. But if you went down there and you got one of them shovels as big like that, a number one, and that handle thing in there, and they had one of them little cheap Walmart handles from a hole in it, you know you ain't going to do much with it. You know how many axe handles I've sheared off in my life? Oh, my Lord. You better get a good one. When that patience and that full bloom and everything comes around, you've got a handle in that shovel and the grain is turned the right direction so you don't break it easy. Just like a baseball bat. You're hitting the vertical grain, not the face grain, because it'll break. And when you get that good shovel with that good handle, you can do something with it. And when you come to full bloom and when you let the Lord do in you what the Lord needs to do, you will be of value in the work of God. But I'm going to get to what I really want to talk about here. <laughs> Seems like I've been talking a lot already, huh? If you want to know things are going on in your life, there's something going on all the time. I, I don't know if it ever is a day. We get to go a day without something new. And you're up against things, you're doing things, there's troubles, there's tribulations, there's things you have to deal with. If you want to know, verse 5, what God wants you to do, ask Him. Now, let's clear that up. Ask Him. And he will gladly tell you, for he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. And he will not resent it. He won't get mad at you. He won't be angry at you because you're asking him for wisdom about doing something. Now think about what you're doing. You're asking God the creator of heaven and earth. You're asking him for wisdom 
about a particular situation, a thing, something going on, whatever it may be, one of those trials and tribulations that everybody has. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect him to tell you. Now that is faith. That the Lord will respond and answer you. And here's where the problem comes. Many times we want the answer now. I don't think there's anybody that ever prays for something that don't want to see the answer right now. That is human nature. You want the answer now. But be sure that when you ask, you really expect him to tell you. Because I'm going to tell you something. God will answer. God will respond. When will God respond? That's his deal. See, we don't like that. The song doesn't say, in my time, in my time. You'll make all things beautiful in my time. No. In your time, you make all things beautiful in your time. I am learning more every day what that's about. Me. What God does, how he does it, and when he does it, and all the whole thing all about it. As you see God working, and maybe it's sometimes some years, not today, not this minute, that God does things because he does it in his time. He does it in the way that's best. He does it when it should be and how it should be, and it works for good. I can't name too many things that I've done when I just did what I thought I should do that have been worth a crying dime. It wasn't God's time. It wasn't in God's time. It was in my time. I know none of you have ever done that. Don't look at me like, man, you're a sad case. We've never done that. We don't. Yeah, right. Yeah. See, there's something that goes with all that. Asking God for wisdom, asking God for what he would have you do, how he would have you do. You know what? This is in First Wayne. <clears throat> you know what I think the problem is? We're not sure we want God's answer. Uh, God gives us wisdom. God puts in our heart what's right and how it should be and the whole deal and what we should do. But what happens if that's not the answer we were looking for? Hmm. Uh, God, <clears throat> I don't like that one. Um, can you try that again? <laughs> you know? Oh, God, I've got a real good answer for that right here. If you'll just, I'll be good. Really? Still your idea, not God's. What if God says, sure, I'll stamp that for you. See how that works out for you. Then come on back and we'll see what we can figure out after you've already made a mess. That's the truth. We want to go to God... We want God to straighten things out. We want God to show us what is the right thing to do. And he will do that. But will you listen to God? Will you do what God says? 
Will what God puts in front of you be a yes, Lord? Or will it be a man's idea, you know, his carnal nature, his earthly thoughts and desires? Will that be what you want, not what God says? Anybody ever have trouble with that one? Surely not. Praise you, Jesus. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect him to tell you. For a doubtful mind, and some versions will say double-minded man, will be as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. And if you've ever been out on the ocean, way out on the ocean, it can be pretty unsettled. Greg, you remember Grandpa's big old imp boat, 23-footer, two 160 inboard outboards. Standing in there in the wall about this high on you, and there's times I wish I could crawl in between the floor and the hole and hide. 24 miles out on the ocean in the Baja, and I mean some waves. Big waves. Rough. Pukey rough. When a man asks of God and he doubts, doesn't know if God will hear or listen or react, that's what you are. Yeah. I remember Jesse and Dorothy being out there in that little bitty 16 foot boat that you could row in them ways. That's terrifying. That was Grandpa's brother, Jesse Newton. At any rate, get on from that. He is driven and tossed by the wind. And every decision you then make, because you are that way, will be uncertain. As you turn first this way and then that. If you don't ask of God with faith, don't expect the Lord to give you any kind of a solid answer. You've got problems. You've got trials. You've got troubles. You've got issues of life all the time. And there's things you don't know what to do with. You've been through a few of them. And God gives you an answer. And you know it. You know what that answer is. You feel it in here. You sense it. You know. Will you trust? Will I trust God? Will I listen to him? Will I hear him? And will I act upon what he says? Or will I as a carnal Natured, earthly man do what I think I should do. And then hope that God will pick up on the damage control. As a Christian who doesn't, verse 9, as a Christian who doesn't amount to much in this world should be glad for he is great in the Lord's sight. Uh, just a common man of faith living in this life God appreciates. And the man that goes to God and trusts God. But a rich man should be glad that his riches mean nothing to the Lord. What if the Lord is to say, well, you got X amount of bucks. You got some gold you ain't told nobody you got. You got some silver you ain't telling nobody about. You've got all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to take care of the people that don't have anything, and you take care of yourself. 
Ooh. Anybody that's been to the doctor or a lawyer knows the money won't last long. What is it that Baxter Black said? Most of you don't know who that is. Lawyery. It's next to robbery. <clears throat> but a rich man should be glad that his riches mean nothing to the Lord, for he will soon be gone like a flower that has lost its beauty and fades away, withered, killed by the scorching summer sun. So it is with rich men. They will soon die and leave behind all their busy activities, all their gold and their silver and all that kind of stuff, you know. Happy is the man who doesn't give in and do wrong when he is tempted for afterwards he will get as his reward the crown of life that God has promised those who love him. And remember, when someone wants to do wrong, it is never God who is tempting him. For God never wants to do wrong and never tempts anyone else to do it. Get that in your spirit, in your heart, in your head, in your mind. Put it somewhere you won't lose it. God does not tempt. He is not tempted, and he does not tempt. Get that. Temptation is the pull of man's own evil thoughts and wishes. These evil thoughts lead to evil actions and afterwards to the death penalty from God. So don't be misled, dear brothers. It is from the natural desires of the heart of man that temptation to do wrong comes. Will we give in to it? That is the question. Don't be misled, dear brothers. But wherever or excuse me, whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God, the creator of all light, and he shines forever without change or shadow. Everything pretty much that the Bible says in those first scriptures about temptations and troubles and letting patience have its way in you and work in you is diametrically, isn't that the right word, for 180? Okay. You know, I'm not a big word man, so I don't. Um, but it's diametrically opposed to the nature of man. God is diametrically opposed to the nature of man. You look at what he says. You study on that for a minute. Not from man's eyes, but from God's eyes. Spiritual eyesight. And then you look at how you think about that as a man. How close together do those get? Not very close. You know what? I'm going to say this. If I offend someone, I'm sorry, but I feel like I should. If it were not for trials, tribulations, troubles, problems in life, I would dare say it would take very little time till we would give no consideration to the Lord. If we didn't have anything going wrong, if we didn't have anything to deal with, if we didn't have anything that gets really next to us, that stresses us, strains us, worries us, how long would the Lord be in the picture? Think about that. You'd go about life, you'd do whatever. 
and you wouldn't worry about it. Because I got no problem, no issue. It's all good. But it's the trials, the problems, the troubles. It's your kid problems. It's your grandkid problems. It's your husband or wife problems. It's sickness. It's someone else in your family that you have just all kind of concern and worry about. All kind of stuff comes our way from every direction. And if there wasn't something that made us realize that we need the Lord, where would we be? Hmm. Would you like me to tell you? Where would we be if there wasn't resistance? How would we gain strength if there was not resistance? How would that work? Think about that. Resistance builds strength, builds character, makes you realize. And there's a lot of difference between trouble and troubled. Trouble. Trouble is something you have to deal with. Trouble is something that is there, an issue that is there that has to be somehow resolved. Jesus was troubled. The word says he was troubled. He went into the garden to pray, and he, what did he say? He could call how many angels to just fix this deal here, and I'm out of here. But it says he was troubled. And as he prayed, he sweated it was though great drops of blood because he was troubled because of what was coming. And he could have easily resolved that. There would have been no trouble. But because of his desire to fulfill the will of his father and to do what he was sent to do, he didn't let the troubles get him down. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Wow. You're going to have problems. The Bible says that. Thank you, Pastor. We're glad to hear that. <laughs> Already had them, huh? But the Lord sees every problem. He sees every issue. He sees everything you deal with. And he will help you with knowing how to deal with that if you go to him. And he will be glad to do it. But don't scoff at his answer to your problem. Do what God has for you to do. Do what God would have you to do. Then you will be happy because what God resolves is resolved. Praise God. Take God's, take God's answer. Go with it. See what he does. It's amazing sometimes how good it gets on the other side when you do what God asks you to do. You don't think in your own wisdom and your ability to reason out that that's the right answer. But if it's God's answer, it's the right answer. And in time, it will prove itself out. Praise God. Could I have some music, please? Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Well, the music's getting together there. 
if there's anybody in this place this day who say, Pastor Wayne, there's some things I need to get right in my life. There's some things I know that aren't pleasing to God. I know I need to get my life straightened out with the Lord. I need to quit leaning on what I think is right and is good. And I need to go to what God thinks is right and is good. And what will carry me through the gate. The word says broad is the way. Easy is the way to the path of destruction. And many there be that find it. It offers zero resistance. No gain because of strain, but narrow is the way. And there's a lot of things in the way sometimes to the narrow gate. But it says, narrow is the way, and few there be that find it that leads to heaven. Isn't that sad? That is so sad that people want to take the path of no resistance. They want to just flow right on and head over the hill. And once it gets to start, it's a steep, that it's so hard to climb back. They just don't want to do it. They just go with it. Well, the way up before there's no down in the Lord's kingdom builds muscle builds strength and God's word is the light that lights the things that get in your way that make it difficult that you would stumble over that would lay in the path and try to snare you God's light shines on that and shows you the way and ahead of that is the gate the gate you want to go through that leads to eternal life praise you Jesus if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I'd be glad to pray with you. If you're here today and there's some things that you want to just give to Jesus and you want him to work it in your life, I'll be glad to pray with you with that. Everybody here, child of God, will be glad to back you with that prayer. Is that not true? Amen. Amen. Praise God. If there's something you want to give to the Lord today, Let's do it. Meet me up here, and we'll give it to the Lord. Cast your care on me, for I care for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead and let's sing that. Praise you, Jesus. Peace of mind I like you never know like you never know Praise you Jesus Praise God Stand with me please Yeah. Uh-huh.
still God in the night. Aren't you glad for that? That the God that shines in the good times and that you know is working on your behalf is working on your behalf in the dark. God is always up to something. He is always on the job. We just need to get hooked up to him good and solid. And go with it. Because he cares for us. His blood was shed on Calvary's tree at the whipping post for us. He was willing to give all. I'm going to go with him. I'm going to put all my eggs in one, or my egg in one basket. And I'm going to give it to the Lord and I'm going to go with the Lord. Because I can look back in my life now and see where he has never once, once let me down. His way has always been the right way. My way has always been the wrong way. And he has proven himself to me. When I ask him for an answer... I am going to accept what he does, how he does it. And I'm going to thank him for it. Because he cares for me. Why, I don't know. But he cares for me. And he cares for you. You can trust him. When you ask him in something, follow his leading. It will do you nothing but good. Praise you, Jesus. Let's sing it once again, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. When things go wrong, you make them right. It's still God in that time. Is still God in the night. Hallelujah. He's just God all the way around any time. His latch string's always out. He's good to ride the river with. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Cuz, Terry, pray for us, please. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. 